So we are out with Dean, who's the owner of Liquid Spring, and he is gonna be the one to answer a bunch of questions that you, the viewers, are probably gonna have. So Dean, thank you for taking the sure. time to spend time with us. Absolutely. Help us outfit our beautiful motorhome that's up on the lift. We're yep. super excited about your product. So mm -hmm. a couple of questions. Sure. What is Liquid Spring? How did this company start? So Liquid Spring started back in 2004. Our mission was to commercialize liquid suspension systems using a compressible fluid as a spring medium. Uh, we started off in the mining industry. From there, we worked our way into on-highway vehicles, such as your vehicle back here. We really started off in ambulances back in about 2012. Today, we probably have 95% of the type one ambulance marketplace. Three years ago, we ventured off into bus and motorhome marketplaces to find other opportunities where our product can really help the ride and handling of vehicles such as yours. So a lot of people know about what your system does mm -hmm. as far as, you know, we spoke at nauseum over what your system does. We've done mm -hmm. another video, we'll link that above, but sure. we wanna know a little bit more about your company, about sure. the people in the company, What's this company about, you know, the manufacturing process, everything made in-house, let, let us know a little bit more about that. So the, the culture here at our company is really about making a quality product. And we do that by spending a lot of time on our processes, and you'll see some of that here as we go on our tour, about the care and effort that we put into making our product consistently and the right way the first time. Uh, and you'll see that on your vehicle here. The culture here, everyone is uh, a good team. We've had, went from about 10 people up to approximately 80 folks right now, all doing and pulling from the same uh, viewpoint, if you will, and working very hard to make good product. And now I will notice, say something that we noticed. We, we took a little tour before mm -hmm. speaking with you. It's kind of a, a calm environment here. We've been into some factories where it's very hectic. There's a lot of things going on. Pretty calm here for a factory, and I think people are going to see that a little bit more when we walk around. I, I, I wouldn't characterize it as calm. I would just characterize it as very organized. Organized, okay, um, perfect. Which, which you'll see the area is fairly clean. Tools are where they're supposed to be, such as our shadow boards over there, our, our, our mechanics are using. So everything has a place and a place for it. So we know where to get our equipment. So there's not a lot of hecticness, if you will, or chaos that you're referring to. Everything's very organized, and everyone knows what they need to do because we process your process is set up for everything. And that's going to be reflected in a superior product. It, it will be, and you'll see, we again, everything's very organized. We take great care to make sure that we're making the product the right way the first time, all the time. Awesome. So our trucks come in here, they bring in all of our raw material, uh, all of our raw material stored here, our plate for making uh, some of the suspension components. We've got bar stock all throughout there, tubing and whatnot all comes in here. And this is where we process all of our raw material. Behind you here is our laser. All of our plate stock is put on our laser. It's a very accurate, simple way of putting a cookie cutter. We've got our brake press over there. These two pieces of equipment are very important because they talk to each other. All of our CAD files for designs basically go to the brake press. The brake press then tells the laser cutter how to cut the part so we can always make the good part first time every time. It's also helped us relative to our training. So our training time to train our press brake operators is very minimal. We can basically within a couple weeks train someone off the street how to operate that equipment okay. because it's very capable and simple to use. Okay. So a very key to making good product is having capable equipment. Awesome. So this is our brake press. Josh is operating it right now. As you can see, He's got a step-by-step -step instruction telling him exactly how to load the part, bend it once, bend it the second time. We've got very accurate segmented dies all here stored in these blue file cabinets. Basically, he's calling the job up, pulling his dies out, getting it set up is very minimal, very easy, and then he's making the parts. So basically, once all of our parts are cut and bent, they come over here to our laser, manual welding over here, and then we have a robotic welding over here. All of our parts are made basically with fixtures. They're very accurate, so every kit that we make has its own fixture setup. They're all tacked here in this first station and then moved to the second station for final welding. So here's all our final weldments staged, ready to go to our particle process. There's a sheet here that gets checked off, kind of a, a traveler, if you will where all the parts are verified that are here that are needed to go to powder coat. So they're all staged here. This is tomorrow's powder coat work that's gonna be done. So I have a question. So Wayne told me you have a very interesting background. Mm -hmm. And I think our viewers and potentially customers may wanna know a little bit about 
what you know regarding suspension. So I've been in the suspension industry for 30 years. Started off doing uh, steel spring and air suspensions. Spent a uh, considerable amount of time basically pioneering the independent front suspensions that are used on most diesel pushers today. Uh, that was through Rayco graining at the time. Based on that background and seeing this technology with compressible fluids, that's the reason I got out of the air suspension business and went over to the compressible fluids suspension system. I've been doing that the past 15 years. So, so essentially what your, your product here is allowing the gas motorhomes that don't have that air suspension to really right. Get there, if not surpass Correct. the quality, the, the ride of a Correct. diesel pusher. Exactly. Which is, we're, not, think, we're not just trying to replicate what the diesel pusher does. We're trying to actually go beyond what the diesel pusher can do and actually make your gas engine coach drive as good, if not better, than your diesel pusher you're, you're used to today. So it's giving you all the luxury ride that you'd have in your diesel pusher, but in a gas engine chassis. One of the reasons our shop runs so well is because we have a very uh, well-equipped and staffed maintenance department to make sure all our equipment is up and running all the time if it breaks down. However, we have an extensive preventive maintenance program in place that these gentlemen here run that basically makes sure all of our machines are operating all the time, which makes us very efficient in terms of how we operate. So here we have some of our weld rotators. These make our volumes, strut bodies, rod assemblies. Uh, you'll notice these areas fairly clean. Uh, it seems pretty innocuous. Our robo vent there, another clean environment. We're trying to make sure that our operators are well cared for and taken care of. Again, making it a nice place to work, if you will. So this is one of our machining centers. Very important to part of our product. We make this gland material here. This gland is very instrumental in our strut element. There's a lot of features on here. Basically, the operator loads the part in a blank like this, and the machine does all the machining processes to make this part right here. We have all of our control charts here for documenting all the particular features, make sure that the quality is built in. We give our, all of the inspection equipment is here, so the operator is really responsible for his own quality. We don't have, say, an internal quality department where people come around like, say, the you know, to inspect things, we let our operators take care of it and give them the responsibility and the ability to basically ensure good quality. So here we're going for what we'll call a batch process to one piece flow. All of those carts you saw with all these kit components are sitting there in the pallet. They're then loaded onto these carts. Carts are very instrumental for us in terms of our powder coat process. Basically it allows us to one time load the parts. We basically can clean them or abrade them, we can powder coat them, run them through our oven, they don't come off the carts until they're ready to be packed into the box. It's a very key thing for our processes in terms of producing a good quality powder coat on our parts. So part of our powder coat process is preparation. And we do this by putting all of our parts through this large shot peening device. Some people like to call it a giant dishwasher. But anyhow, these trees are picked up, loaded one by one. There's two trees per cart. Each tree goes in for about 90 seconds. There's big horsepower motors over there that throw a shot at it and basically abrade the surface and prep it for the powder coat adhesion. Very critical to having good powder coat adhesion and, and longevity in terms of how it lasts. So here in our powder coat booth, uh, parts are be the powder is being applied to the parts. You can see how instrumental the trees are at this point. Basically the operator does not have to touch any of the parts. He can literally grab onto the hooks and rotate the part to make sure the powder application is even and complete. Uh, very critical to getting good powder coat application. So here we're in our, our oven room. Basically there's several carts here staged, ready to go in. Got all our red struts here on this cart, done in a batch. And then our one piece flow for our various units and kits here. And behind us here is the oven. We basically put four carts in per batch. Uh, the oven runs about four, five to six times a day, basically curing the powder onto the parts. So this is our power module room. Uh, we like to call it where the, uh, the brains and the heart of the system are put together. Uh, we've got a couple assembly stations here. There's some pre-assembly, some reservoir assemblies. Then we actually do what's called a, a power module buildup right here. Then there's a final test station over here. The, the purpose of the final test station is to test all the parts put together as an integrated compo componentry, if you will. It's hooked up as if it were connected to the vehicle. 
and test it through about a 40 step process to make sure everything is working right so that when it gets to our installer, the people that are on our install bay right now or an outside installer, that the part's gonna work like it's supposed to. So now we're in our strut assembly room. Uh, these are some of our powder coated strut bodies. We need to put the strut bodies together first. They're all masked off so powder does not get where it doesn't need to be. Then the struts are taken apart and then the internals of the strut are actually assembled over here in this workstation. There's a computer monitor there telling the assembly operator exactly what needs to be put in it. Uh, there's someone over there staging the parts to be delivered over here to be put together. And all of our struts are basically assembled in this room in a very clean environment. All of the, the parts that are needed are behind me here in these bins provided by all our suppliers. So this is our strut tester. Basically, uh, every strut that gets assembled gets tested in this apparatus. Strut tester makes sure that we have the right extended and collapsed length, as well as having the right damping characteristics. Uh, basically, it goes through about a 10-step process, filling the strut, checking the dimensions of it, and making sure that, the, that it's been assembled correctly in the strut assembly room behind us. So here's our powder-coated cart all ready to go. Uh, all of our final assembly stations are here. We've got volumes that need to be assembled, rate valves to be put in. We've got control arms that need bushings put in. There's stations back here behind me to do that. Hoses are made over here to my right. Basically all those parts are assembled and then put into a box over here for final packing. So we're a marriage of all of our power module struts. All these assembled parts are all put into the box and ready to go to the customer. Wow, Dean, so thank you so much. Super informative. I don't think there's anything else out on YouTube with a tour like this. Mm -hmm. So people really know what they're getting if they're gonna get into a liquid spring suspension. Right. You can see behind us, this is actually the rear part for our coach, and we're really excited about this. So mm -hmm. in the comments below, let us know if you have any questions about liquid spring. If you own liquid spring, what do you think about it? And for myself, Dean, MJ, Wayne, and Chris, we're all here at the factory. We thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you on the road. Thank you very much.